Okay, um, this is a video reply to one of Terence Pop's videos. I'm not going to go through all the video, um, just a few of the things in the video that I'm going to disagree with, but I will link the video down below, like, if anybody wants to see the whole thing. Okay, so here it is. Most women I know do actually want a husband or a boyfriend, but... Finding that is easier said than done. After all, it's hard to have a great relationship when the vast majority of men aren't worth a damn. What is more likely? A majority of the men out there aren't worth a damn, or... You are so entitled, shallow and picky, that you automatically disqualify almost all of them. But, uh, you're not being picky then, when you, lot, um, uh, disregard all Western women as being trash. Okay, you have, what is it, you've got some women nowadays complaining that men aren't men anymore, and you've got some men nowadays complaining that women aren't women anymore. Okay, so what does that tell you? Well, the stats on OkCupid okay paint that picture beautifully. Isn't that gorgeous? Bob Ross couldn't have done a better job. Oh, Space Ghost just came out. Yes, women were fussier when it came to appearance, judging, rating the appearance of men in pictures. But when it came to messaging, the important thing, most women messaged like around average looking men, okay? Because most women, are, most women don't, uh, view, view their self as average in appearance. There's like a survey, a global survey done by Dove where most women uh, rate their own appearance as average. But also, like, I don't think appearance is the most important thing to women. Like, everybody says that it's either uh, looks or money that women are attracted to. And I think, um, I still maintain that women are fussier about personality than what men are. Okay as a generalization but also it's like um the women on these dating sites they probably are more attractive than what the men are because women are gonna like make an effort to do their hair and do their makeup and probably some of the photographs are airbrushed as well well men rely like i said more on their personality okay i mean okay with dating sites the first thing people see is the picture but then again if women are uh, messaging men that are of an average appearance and it's probably because they want to chat to the guy and get to know him and aren't just bothered about what you look like. Number one, the fact that having a side chick is so widespread is a major problem. If having side chicks is such a problem, doesn't it take two to tango? Isn't it more logical that strong, independent women are choosing to share high-value men? After all, they're talking about maybe 15% of the dudes out there, and we're just talking about height. And that 15% of dudes, they're the prime real estate that 100% of the women out there want to squat on. And no, I'm not talking about how you write your name in the snow, because let's face it, you can't. But... All of that shit I just talked about, completely irrelevant, and I'm gonna explain why. Millennial women are cheating more than men, and they're proud of it. Links in the description. It's younger women are statistically speaking more likely to cheat than younger men, but older men are statistically speaking more likely to cheat than older women. Now, it has it been in the past, it's always been men cheat more than women, but now, because uh, more younger women cheat, the sort of cheating gap is closing, apparently. Now... <sighs> Don't get me wrong, it's like disgusting for anybody to cheat, and it's gonna be like devastating for and hurtful for anybody to be cheated on. But surely, in the case of people that get cheated on in the beginning of a relationship, it's gonna be easier for them to move on than people who get cheated on after years of marriage, okay? When, statistically speaking, men are being cheated on more at the beginning stage, while women are being cheated on more after years of marriage. And um, if a woman you know, if a woman's, like, been cheated on after years of, like, marriage and having the guy's kids and being a loyal housewife, being a loyal wife, then that means that she, like, risks end up being uh, what red pillars would describe as a washed up post-war single mother, okay? And you'll all, like, trash single mothers and talk about what, are, what terrible things they are. And you take, like, the divorce statistics and say, like, because more 
more divorces are filed by women that oh that proves that women break up the family and men can do no wrong when you know full well that a fair few of those divorces that are filed by women are going to be because the man cheated okay but also i kind of find it funny like that mick toes go on about how marriage is risky for men right because they say like any woman could divorce her husband on a whim and take him to the cleaners in the divorce courts right okay and i've never disagreed with mick toe over this like i disagree with a lot of uh, the propaganda they say about women but i have never um disagreed with people saying saying you know the uh, the divorce courts are unfair um there are some nasty women out there that will like just want to take a man to the cleaners and just be horrible okay and, and i've never dis- disagreed with guys saying that they don't want to get married because of that reason okay but i will add that like it's not like marriage is totally a uh, risk free from for women either then is it because like a woman like you know they all go on about how women should be married by the time they're 25 and they a lot of them like traditional women and rather a woman be a homemaker than have a career and all that well okay well if a woman gets married when she's young she's given up on any career prospects to be a housewife so she has kids she's a loving and loyal wife she's never cheated she's been loyal she's like given the marriage her all and then like after years of marriage finds out that he's sleeping with other women and like she's so hurt like she can't forgive him so she divorces him then like i said she can end up one of these uh single mothers and a lot of single mothers are really struggling financially because they gave up on any prospect of career to look after the children so well yeah you can get some men who've been taken to the cleaners in a divorce and are in financial ruin and then you get some single mothers who are in financial ruin okay and anybody who enters into a relationship runs the risk of having their heart broken by the other person okay and um you know but also say like Domestic violence, I mean, both uh, men and women can be abusive to their partners as both violent and, and, and mentally abusive men and women. But statistically speaking, women are more likely to die as a result of domestic violence. Um because women are are not as physically strong as men so basically what i'm saying is if you're gonna always take the absolute worst case scenario like well you could do that both ways if you're gonna say to like young men it's like well you know if you get married she could uh one day she could take you to the cleaner she'll take you for everything you got she'll make false allegations against you well then likewise should i be saying to like women then oh you know uh you might marry a guy who seems lovely but after years of marriage he might be sleeping with other women he might become an abusive alcoholic that beats you do you know what i mean it's like (laughs) there can be absolute worst case scenarios either way once again we have a classic case of rules for thee but none for me Our generation simply has a massive gap when it comes to infidelity. Guys see having two girls like a status symbol. On the other hand, if girls do it, we're promiscuous. Are we still talking about the difference between sloots and stews? Really? It's the difference between building your own house from the ground up and walking into a house someone else built for you. A woman who has three or four boyfriends only needs to say one thing. Yes. But... A dude with a girlfriend and a couple of side chicks, he had to work for that. Are you actually saying that it's not so bad for a man to cheat on his wife because he had to work for it? Like, really? So, you know, women, like, if you had to just work harder, you know, uh, to cheat on your husband, uh, then it wouldn't be so bad. But the fact that all you've got to do is look pretty and some man wants to have sex with you, well, that, that makes it really bad that you cheated on your husband. But, you know, if you were ugly and you had to really, really work to get a man to be a, a attracted to you wouldn't it be much much finer for you to just cheat on your husband it's like come on we're talking about morals here we're not talking about how hard you had to work uh, to find some woman to cheat with if you're cheating on your partner you're disrespecting your partner you're breaking their heart you're risking their life because you could bring home blimmin hiv or something that's not okay for anybody to do all of these chicks probably know about each other or they have a gut feeling that it's going on They choose to ignore it because getting the hose from a top tier dude is worth it. Because being this dude's side chick is way more attractive than being this person's one and only. 
because that dude's only valuable when you hit 35 and you need his money to stay alive. Saying that, like, sometimes a woman has an inkling that the guy is seeing other women but just keeps quiet about it, okay, that doesn't make it morally okay on his part. Because sometimes, and this can be men or women, they may have seen the signs that their partner's cheating but they don't want to believe it or they, they don't confront their partner because they're scared of, of hearing the answer. Like, they, they're not happy. They, they, they don't want their partner to be cheating on them, okay? It can still be emotionally um, devastating, okay? And so I do think it's a little bit disgusting that you're here, like, um, justifying men cheating on their wives. And this is quite a common thing with red pillars, how they blame hookup culture on women, but then talk about how they sleep around. And they go on about women being disloyal cheaters, but then seem to have the opinion that it's okay for men to do it. All right. When really, like, if you lo love or care about your partner, you wouldn't do something like that. The truth is that men who would have a side chick deserve no chick at all. Tell that to the whole generation of sugar babies out there who are throwing the poon out there for cash. And then we'll talk. And no fucks are given by these ladies. They don't care if he's married, single, has a girlfriend. Doesn't even come into play. Yeah, and there are some guys in the Mikto community who've talked about how they sleep with women that are married. Okay. Well, when a guy says that, well, you still think the woman's accountable for cheating on her husband. So if a man is cheating on his wife with one of these sugar babies, he's still accountable. It's like, yeah, if a woman seduces a married man, she's in the wrong. Or if a man seduces a married woman, he's in the wrong. But the worst person is still the person who's cheating on their partner. All they really care about is the money and all of the trappings they can get with said money. Well, all the men care about is just getting their end away. That's it. Shallow on both sides. It's either that or selling all of your used prophylactics to buy a one-way ticket to box wine in Catland. Are you actually saying that women either uh, have to put up with husbands that would cheat on them or uh, stay single? Now, I would say to anybody, male or female, if your partner's cheating on you, leave them. Don't waste your time. Don't give any more to them if they don't respect you or love you enough, okay? Why should you, like, sacrifice and give your all to somebody who, like, won't just give you basic respect and and do the the bare minimum and and stay faithful to you number two guys have gotten increasingly demanding with looks <laughs> really really now come on anyone with a brain stem and a pulse uh, knows which sex is more shallow you don't see men disqualifying 85 percent of the women out there based on height we don't care how much money you make Hell, you don't even need to have a job. We don't even care how tall you are. In fact, if you're short enough, that gives us a whole range of new ideas, if you know what I mean. Here's a thought. If you think men are that shallow, go to Orn Pay Hub and just look at all the different categories. It is quite disgusting. <laughs> this proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that most men are not shallow. Okay, first of all, when it comes to attraction, you might not care about something like height, but when it comes to age, don't you lot say that if a woman's over 30 that she's no good, or even now 25? Okay, but then tell like men who are about 50 that their sexual market value is increasing? Well, if that were true, that would mean that about 80% of men are only attracted to about 10% of women, wouldn't it? Okay, now I wonder why is it that if um, women are biologically attracted to men that are taller and bigger and stronger than what they are because it makes them feel like smaller and, and feminine and protected like why that's supposed to be wrong and shallow but if men are biologically programmed to be like attracted to youth and health and fertility th that's okay that's okay for you to have your attraction okay now i also like find it really funny that when he shows a picture of an overweight woman 
He does an impression like he's going to be sick and says she's disgusting, but then goes on to say, Oh, men are a lot less shallow than women because some men would still fancy her. It's like, yeah, there are some men who have fetishes about fat women, okay? But they're a minority. They are exception to the rule, okay? And when you lot talk about female nature and fem- what women are attracted to and all that, you lot normally say that um, exception to the rule does not count. This is why um, red pillars disregard the Naywalt argument, okay? They say exception to the rule does not apply, but then... When you're trying to make the case that men aren't shallow, uh, the first thing you do is you jump to the exception to the rule argument. Okay, it's like, yeah, there are some women that are attracted to fat men. There are some women that are attracted to shorter men. There are some women who don't care if their man earns a lot less than what they do. There are some women who don't care if the man's ugly as long as he's got a nice personality. Okay, women are individuals too, but these guys will always take the most shallowest, horrible women and then say, this is female nature, they're all like it. And if anybody points out that women aren't all the same, they'll say, like, oh, well, exception to the rule doesn't exist, even though, like, most of the time it's not exception to the rule, but still. And then the first thing you do is point out exception to the rule when you're talking about men, okay? But also, I kind of find it funny that this Terence has said this before. Men do not care how successful you are or how intelligent you are. Okay, you will notice with these red pillars that very often, like, when they want to neg and rubbish women, they will, um... They'll go on about how women's only value is for sex. They don't care what their personality is like. They don't care whether they're nice, interesting, intelligent, funny, or anything like that. They just want somebody for sex. But then when they want to compete with women and they want to try and make out that men are a lot less shallow than what women are, then suddenly it's like, well, actually, if you're cool, we're not that bothered about looks. It's like... You contradict yourselves all the time there. It's all too common to hear guys bemoan how they can't get a hot girl while they themselves bring little in terms of looks to the table. Let's go back to the same chart from OkCupid, shall we? When you have all the women out there rating 80% of the men as unattractive, there's your problem. Your point has become so invalid, it is now invalid. It's in a vegetative state. There is no brain activity, and I'm sorry, but... We're going to have to pull the plug on that one. Again, the OK Cupid survey, a majority of women chose to contact people that were average looking. And well, yes, you certainly will get some women who expect the absolute top tier, most attractive, most best man when they themselves might be average. And then they'll complain that it's the man who's being shallow for not choosing them. But then you also get, like, middle-aged, pot-bellied, balding men uh, talking about how they can't, how they want a, like, 20-year-old virgin, but can't get one because uh, the women's standards are too high. <laughs> yeah, I think you get a bit of that in your uh, red pill community as well. So why would anyone marry someone who's basically unable or unwilling to contribute anything? This question is the equivalent of shitting the bed, flossing your ass with the sheets, leaving, and not even locking the door. She just pulled a Joe Biden and got killed by her own friendly fire. If he's not working and not homemaking, he's not worth it. Because it doesn't matter what he does. If it doesn't have a dollar sign, it's never going to be good enough for you. And if you don't believe me, 80% of divorces are filed by, you guessed it, women. Links in the description. And all divorces are filed by women are always women's fault, are they? There are never times when a woman filed for divorce uh, because the husband cheated or there's never been times when there's been problems in a marriage that are both for their fault. No, no, 100% of the time, whoever files the divorce is the one to blame, are they? Oh, well, only if it's a woman, okay, because when they take the statistics of women that file for divorce uh they use this to say
they like how women are wrong for giving up on the marriage. However, when it's men that file for divorce, you will find that Miktos are pretty quick to assume that 100% of the time, the man had a good reason to file for a divorce, okay? But you leaving your wife is the 27th divorce I actually helped cause by getting the guy to leave. You know that saying, life begins at 30? Well, it's true, <laughs> for men. That is the age most men go, you know what? I have value! And that does something for men that feminism has always failed to do for women. It empowers us truly and completely. We realize we're the prize and you have to dance to our tune. Okay, I hate to break this to you, but um, guys who spend their days writing essays on Micto forums about how they think women are whores and sperm toilets are not a prize to women. Or guys who think that it should be okay to cheat on their partner, or guys who think that women should have their rights taken away and not be allowed to vote and should uh, just be uh, subservient to the man, that's not considered a prize to women. And Mictos always, like, say that they don't care what women think of them. Well, then, who are you saying that you're a prize to? Other men, maybe? Here's a thought.